welcome my boys today i will uh, take you a online class of probability as for covid 19 we are staying at home so our online classes is going on and you were uh, taking this class as a guideline for you we already finished probability this theory in last lecture by bishuri sir now i will show you some other topics and some problems from your books i think this should be beneficial for you if you follow the full class hope you will enjoy it so let's begin with a new topic and that is what is probability tree diagram actually we know probability have some outcomes we have to write it if we show it in a tree shape that means from one branch it spread other branches then it is called tree diagrams here i have give you a definition a probability tree diagram show all the possible events the first event is represented by a dot from the dot branches are drawn to represent all possible outcomes of the event the probability of each outcome is written on its branch and this is how it is called probability tree diagram that means from one branch it is spreaded that means how many outcomes it has you have to draw that many branches and it will show you the actual all outcomes of the probability now let us see a tree diagram of tossing a coin once if we toss a coin we know that there are two probabilities it can be head or tail and we know uh, uh, from theory that what is the probability of uh, getting head for uh, from one coin if you toss once that is half and i have showed it in this in this part half the probability of head getting head is half and probability of getting tail is half so this is how the tree diagram actually shows the probability outcomes now you can easily see that there are two possible outcomes here and i have given all this two okay so this is how we can represent our probability outcomes through probability tree diagrams now let us go to our chapter's problem and starting with number 15 it is already 1 to 14 is similar types as you, the teacher has been explained you now we are starting with number 15 the probability that a certain person will travel from dhaka to rajshahi by train is 5 by 9 and that person will travel from rajshahi to dinaspur by bus is 2 by 7 it was in probability tree diagram find the probability that the person will travel from dhaka to rajshahi not by train and then travel to dinaspur by bus now look at one thing in the question from dhaka to rajshahi he is traveling by train probability is 5 by 9 then what should be the probability of not by train so we know the total probability is 1 so if we subtract 1 5 by 9 from 1 it gives us 4 by 9 so that is that is the probability of getting uh, by traveling not by train from dhaka to rajshahi is 4 by 9 similarly the probability of traveling rajshahi to dinaspur by bus is 2 by 7 so if we want to find out not to travel by bus then it should be 1 minus 2 by 7 which is 5 by 7 so this is how only two information is given but we have four information from here okay and the second question of this second part of this question is find the probability that the person will travel from dhaka to rajshahi by train and then travel to dinaspur not by bus that means both questions are conditional that means based on one condition if he traveled dhaka to rajshahi not by train and then he will travel from dinaspur by bus now 
let us see the solution here I have tried to draw a probability diagram which was required in the question now look here he traveled Dhaka to Rashahi by train is 5 by 9 and by not by train is 4 by 9 and if he travel from Rashahi to Dinaspur by bus that is 2 by 7 and if he not travel by bus is 5 by 7 so there are three options if we want to uh, two options from Rashahi to Dinaspur and two options from Dhaka to Rashahi so total how many options he has four options here you can easily see if he travels from Dhaka to Rashahi by train then he can travel by bus or not by bus if he travels not by train to Rashahi then again he has two options by bus and not by bus so this is how we can easily understand that probability tree diagram shows all the possible outcomes of the question okay so from this probability tree diagram you can easily see that the person has four options to go from Dhaka to Dinajpur conditionally okay now let us solve the problem now in the first question it was required that if it travel from Dhaka to Russia not by train and then Russia hit to Dinajpur by bus as we already explained not by train probability is 4 by 9 and it was given probability of going Dinajpur from Russia he by bus is 2 by 7 as it is conditional and they are multiply they will multiply to get the result so 4 by 9 into 2 by 7 it gives us 4 by 63 so this is the result from probability to diagram we can easily understand as these are not depend on each other he can travel by train or not by train that is not uh, that is not uh, give any reflection on um, by going Russia to Dinaspur by bus or not by bus so that is why these two incident are multiplied when we have to find out the problem um, answer okay now the second question was what should be the probability if the person travel from Dhaka to Russia by train and then from Russia to Dinaspur not by bus so again the pr pr probability of going from Dhaka to Russia by train is given 5 by 9 and earlier we have said that from Russia to Dinaspur probability is 5 by 7 so uh, 2 by 7 so it is given that is why if we multiply both of the options we get 25 by 63 okay boys so this is the solution of number 15 number 15 by using probability diagram now let us move on the next problem the next problem is 16 the probability that a person will travel from Dhaka to Chittagong by train is 2 by 9 the probability that person will travel by bus is 3 by 7 and the probability that person will take a flight is 1 by 9 you can easily see that there are three options for him to going from Dhaka to Chittagong one is by train another one is by bus and another one is by flight the probability that the person then travel to travel from Chittagong to College Bazaar by bus is 2 by 5 and by car is 3 by 7 using probability to diagram find the probability that the person will travel from Dhaka to Chittagong by train and then travel to College Bazaar by bus so he has two more options to go to Cox Bajar from Chittagong. Now let us see the T diagram. Here you can easily see that if the person goes from Dhaka to Chittagong, he has three options by train, by bus, and by flight. I have written the probability probability here by train is two by nine, by bus three by seven, and by flight one by nine. And from Chittagong to Cox Bajar, as you know, there are two options by bus by car now here we will not discuss about not by train not by bus or not by flight because we have given only three options we have to maintain these three options 
the negative options are not discussed here so if the person goes by train he has two option to going chitagang in cox bazar if the person going by bus to chitagong and then going to cox bazar he has also two option if the person goes by flight to chitagong and then to cox bazar he has more two options to so total six possible options he has to travel dhaka to cox bazar now let us discuss how he will what is the probability to go that the person from dhaka to chitagong by train and then from chitagong to cox by bus already we find from the probability tree that the uh, probability of going dhaka to chitagong by train is 2 by 9 and from chitagong to cox bazar by bus bus is 2 by 5 so it should be multiply and it becomes 4 by 45 so this is how independent probabilities or outcomes are multiplying to get the result okay boys now the next problem there is a creative problem given in your book in number 17 and it is it has been said that two taka coin is tossed four times and we know usually the sides are denoted by h and t that means head and tail but here it has been denoted that water lily by l and primary school going child by c so we shouldn't give the outcomes by h and t we should give the outcomes by l and c now what is the question of the first if the coin tossed twice rather than four times what is the probability of getting a, a l and that not getting a c that means how many times we will have only one l if we tossed a coin twice and how many times we have the probability to not getting a c okay now the second question b draw the probability tree of possible events and write down the sample spaces that means probability tree of four times tossing a coin four times tossing a coin and number c show that if the coin is tossed n times then the total number of possible events is 2 to the power n okay let us see the solution sample points of tossing coin are l and c as it is mentioned in the stem if the coin is tossed twice the possible outcomes are shown in the following tree diagram now look at the tree diagram if we have two times toss first coin we have l and c then if you again toss that should be L and C. If we start with L for the first coin, we have two options, L and C. If we start from C, again we have two options. So total four outcomes. So sample space, total sample space are, you can easily see, if we start with here, it's L and it's going again L then it is LL if we have L and then again uh, then in the second toss we have C then it should be LC if the first toss we have C and in the second toss we have L then it should be CL and if the first toss we have C and second toss again repeatedly we have C then it should be CC these are the possible outcomes so total number of outcomes are four now let us discuss about the required question number of sample points of getting a l now look at the tree diagram there is one and two possible outcomes where we can have one l so out of four we have two outcomes of getting one l again how many outcomes there we cannot have one c here is one l l there is no c and here is c c that means two c we don't have one C that is why here is also two possible outcomes of not getting a C so as we know by probability that probability of anything is dividing the possible outcomes by the total sample space so possible outcomes is 2 of getting one L and total sample space is 4 so it becomes half and similarly 
probability of get, not getting AC is also half. So that's complete. Number one, number A question. Now in B we have to draw a probability diagram of having four time toss a coin. I have showed you I have showed here a probability diagram which will show you four time tossing first coin we can have L and C and if we have in the first coin L then second coin L C that can have so this pattern we ha I have drawn all the possible outcomes here you can easily see that there are 16 outcomes here there are 16 outcomes possible outcomes so this this is a required t diagram if you follow the rules then you can easily draw it and realize it so total 16 outcomes and these are the all sample points given here LL LLLC LLCL so this is how we have found it from the probability diagram so that's, that was our question number B. Now in question number C, we have to prove that if we tossed a coin n times, then the probable outcome should be 2 to the power n. Now look at if, we, if a coin is tossed once, sample points are LC. That means how many, how many sample points? 2. We can express it 2 to the power 1. If a coin is twice 2 times, the possible outcomes are LL, LC, CL, CC. So how many? Four outcomes. So four can be represented by two square. So two times, that's why two to the power two. Again, if the coin are tossed three times, we have total eight outcomes. And eight can be represented by two cube. So here, for three times, it becomes two to the power three. And from previous problem, we have find out that if we call and toss the coin four times, it should be 16 sample space. That means 2 to the power 4. So 4 times toss, we have 2 to the power 4 sample space. So easily, we can understand that if we toss n times, the possible sample point should be 2 to the power n. So that completes the proof of number C of the creative. Okay? Now, there is another creative in our book. I am discussing with you that one also. There are 8 red, 10 white, 7 black marbles in a basket. A marble is chosen randomly. That means we are not seeing anything and we are picking one marble from the basket. Find all the possible outcomes. So, in A, we have to find out how many possible outcomes are there. Okay, number B, find the probability of the marble being red. So when we are picking one marble, we have to find out the probability of that marble being red and not being white. That is the second part of question B. Number C, if your marbles are picked up one by one without replacing, that means we are picking one by one marble and we are taking four marbles and we are not getting it back on the basket, then what should be the probability of being white? That all the marbles should be white. So let us see. As we have find it that in the basket there are 8 red, 10 white and 7 black marbles. So total number of marble in the basket is 25. So there is possibilities of the marble can be any color if we pick one. That means as the total number is 25, so there is 25 possible outcomes. That is why total number of outcome is 25 for number A and now in number B there are two part in the math first one that is to find out one marble picking from the basket that should be red now total number of 
marble in the basket were 25 and red marble were 8. If you are taking the probability of choose, uh, getting the red marble is R, then probability of R should be number of possible outcomes, that is 8, and total possible outcomes are 25. So 8 by 25, that is the probability of choosing a marble being red. red. Now, what should be if the marble chosen and that is not white. Now, that can be solved in two process, but I have showed you in one. Like, we can do uh, the probability of red plus probability of black and then add them. Another one, if we do what is the probability of being white and then subtract it from the total possible, total probability, that is one then we can get our answer. I have do, uh, done that one. If we think the probability of being white now if we take the probability of the picking marble or chosen marble is white then it should be 10 by 25 as earlier we have shown in number one. Then the total probability is 1. If we minus 10 by 25 from 1, we get 15 by 25. And by simplifying, we get 3 by 5. That means 3 by 5 is the probability that the chosen marble is not white. Now, in number C, we have to find out the probability. If we picking randomly the marbles one by one and not replacing them then what should be the probability of the chosen marble is white there are total 25 marble number of 10 white marble if we replace not replace the marble and picking one by one then this should be the probability now the first probability is 10 by 50, 25 because there are 10 marbles that are white and 25 total marbles in the second time when we are picking already one marble has been decreased in white color and total number uh, at least, uh, has also decreased to 24 so this is why the probability is 9 by 24 next when again after second picking when again we are picking up one marble we found there are 8 white marble and total there are 23 marbles so the probability is 8 by 23 and for the last time when we choose a marble there were only 7 white marbles and total number of marbles were 22 only white marbles were decreasing and for that in total there was 1 by 1 decreasing so th that is why I have it only decrease the number of total marble and white marble now one is not depend on other outcomes that is why all outcomes were multiplied so there are four outcomes as we are choosing uh, four marbles one by one so simplifying them we get 21 by 1265 so that is the answer of Speaking one by one, four marbles, and all of the marbles are white. Okay, boys, I think this will help you to realize the chapter. So thank you all. Stay home, stay safe, and follow the online classes. And this completes your class 10 syllabus. That means a whole book already finished. Then, also, if you have any chapter, any problem, let us know we can think and again if there is any necessity we can revise the chapter okay boys so study well that is one and only work now for you okay thank you boys